This is NVIDIA Jetson Ori Nano, a single board computer made by NVIDIA that can pack a punch. Equipped with 6 ARM cores, 8 gigabytes of unified RAM shared between GPU and CPU, and 1024 CUDA cores. Those CUDA cores are independent execution units that are capable of computing those tasks in parallel. This makes the Ori a very powerful and GPU capable device for its price tag and size. In the previous video, we've seen how to set it up, how to flash the operating system system, how to configure a docker, how to set up everything before we can actually use it. And today we're going to put this little guy to the test. We're going to squeeze the performance out of it. How exactly? We're going to run state-of-art LLM models, large language models like ChatGPT, and we're also going to run our own SQL parallel application to count the number of primes in parallel. If you want to learn more about SQL, I'll leave a link in the description from a previous video. And of course, to do a proper benchmarking and comparison, we're going to run the exact same experiment in three other different machines. We're going to compare the Jetson with its distant cousin, the Raspberry Pi 5, a MacBook Pro M3, and a laptop with an Intel chip and a dedicated NVIDIA GPU device. So before we start, let me show you a few very useful tricks to work with your Jetson. All right, let me first log into the Jetson, type the password. The first command I wanna show you is the NVP model. This is sort of a, a power usage profile. We have three different ones, the preset ones. M0 is the most power saving one. When we, when we call this command and then we go for JTOP, we saw what JTOP was in the previous video. On the top right corner, we see here NV Power 051. So that's the most saving pro power profile that you have uh, already to use in the jet. So, second one is M1. Going back to JTOP, we see 25 watts, that's mid range power usage. And finally, M2, that's the most thorough using uh, profile that we have as a default profile that comes together with the, with the Jetson. In practice, this profile setting adjusts the power usage of the Jetson by means of controlling the maximum or minimum clock ranges that the GPU or the CPU can use. Among other things like temperature control, it also can look into the power usage, like voltage and current levels. So this command sets power usage and by consequence, it also set up your performance in general. The second trick, which is more of a nice to have, is to install an M2 SS drive into your Jetson board. Yes, it is possible there are two slots for that installation and this will make it even faster and while you can actually install the whole operating system into the ssd for today's video i'm still using msd card to boot the operating system from and the ssd that i mounted is only to host the docker images so all every docker operation that i do is actually done inside that ssd drive let me show you how this works. So here I've collected the steps that you have to do if you follow these steps, which is also listed in the website. So first thing is you connect, physically you connect it. You can also check in, in the image uh, how I did it. Then you list it. So let's see if the operating system can identify it. Yes, that's the drive I just inserted. Then we format it into the extended uh, file system for Linux, X4. And then you just NVMe 0 and 1. Yes, you can also partition the disk if you want to into different partitions and they can have different file systems. Uh, but for simplicity, we're going to just uh, format the whole drive as uh, X4. All right, the next step, we check what is the block ID. We do this and here we see there is this UID. That's the identifier for the drive. Why are we doing this? Because we want to mount this drive over power cycles. And to do that, all you have to do is add this entry to the table, UID equals this. And then let me just, okay, I had to do it via sudo, ID equals this. Let me just see the whole commands. That's the important part that comes after the drive, uh, UID. And the mount point will be a folder that I'm going to create, which is SSD. That's where we're going to mount the SSD drive onto in the file system so we can actually use it. If I save this, um, let's make sure the folder exists. I may have already created it. SSD. Yes, it already exists. So to test this mechanism, all I have to do is call this. So it mount 
Okay. If this command works, it means that your drive has been mounted into the folder. If we go to the folder, SSD, look, looks, looks okay. And let's be okay to list it. And we see here it has been mounted. I'm going to do a quick reboot just to prove that overpower cycle, it's still going to automatically mount the drive. Okay, so it looks like the Jetson is back up. If I SSH into it again, and if I list LSBLK, we're going to see that it has still been mounted. And that's the case every time you reboot. One thing that I wanted to point out is that I added this option to make sure that even if I remove, physically remove the drive from the board, the boot of the operating system into the Ubuntu session will still work. That means that if I do not add this flag and the drive is not present, your operating system is going to throw an error and it's not going to boot the, the session. I just realized that two extra steps are important. So I just added them. Sorry, I forgot. The first one is step number seven to add uh give the ownership of the ssd mount point to our user this means that the user can in this case jets and can read and write to the drive if we need it uh the second one is to modify the docker configuration files to include a data root field what does this does it mean so let me just write it down like this mount ssd docker doing this and if i reboot the docker till restart docker this is also uh, if you power cycle this is going to be applied anyway what this is going to do is the, is if you go like this you're going to see that docker is started using this as a place to for for its operation so if i pull an image if i run a container it's actually going to use the drive as a place to be used for storage and that's very important because if we're going to use docker and we, we're going to use a lot of docker everything that relates to docker except when i mount drives in my sd cards which i will try to prevent it means that every docker operation that reads or writes things to the file system will be the fastest that we can get all to the testing this is what we're going to do i've prepared four terminal screens each one represents a different machine the first one is the Raspberry Pi, then we have our Jetson, then we have this MacBook where I'm recording from. Finally, we have the laptop with the Intel chip and the discrete GPU and from NVIDIA. First test is running the same LLM model in all of those different machines. And we're going to observe how fast it is performing. To do that, we're going to use Olama. Olama is a very nice framework that looks a lot like Docker and it easily allows you to fetch models and run the models and serve the models and has a very easy API. Let's start by running Olama server. All you have to do is to run this command in the Raspberry Pi that's probably run. This is going to pull the Olama image from the registry from Docker Hub and it's also already going to run it. So that's the command we do. It's, it pulls and then runs for the JSON and for the laptop we pass a special flag that's going to instruct Docker to run, use the GPU from NVIDIA. In this case, the runtime. So this is the command that we're going to run. For the Mac, Olama is already set up because I had to set up natively. So in the host, I didn't use Docker. I had to install in the host because the GPU from the MacBook is not easily shared to Docker containers. As I, I haven't seen any way to do that. Therefore, we could not benefit from the GPU chips, from the GPU part of the chip, M3 chip, without running the thing locally. This means that the Olama service is already running. We can even see here at the top, I can open Olama and I could already uh, pull models to run my the benchmark. But we're gonna do this from the command line. Before that, let's wait for the other machines to finish the pulling the Docker image. Once the image is pulled, it's already running, and we can check that by using Docker PS. It's gonna list running containers. So for all the device, we've been running, and again, the MacBook has no Docker instance of Olama. It's already running the Olama. For benchmarking, we're gonna use Gamma 3 model from Google, and we're gonna use the uh, latest one, which is 3.3 gigabytes of size. This means that if your VRAM, your GPU RAM or video RAM, has enough room to contain the model, it's all the operations are gonna be done in the GPU. So there's no offloading or or memory transfers, which is what we want. And since so all of our GPU capable devices have at least eight gigabytes of, me of memory, that's a good choice, except for Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has no GPU, but it still has eight gigabytes of RAM. So it's gonna use the CPU and has enough RAM room to uh, contain the model. To actually run the model, all you have to do is to call Olama run, and we're gonna pass in verbose. The verbose option will make sure all the stat st statistics related to uh, 
uh, run in the model will be printed after you do a query. And for the MacBook, because we have a native Olama running, we don't have Docker, so we run this command. For the other machines, we run it from Docker. So remember the server that we put up with this minus D command, it is running in the background. Then we're gonna call, we're gonna pass a Docker command um, such that I execute a command line from inside those containers that were uh, started before. And that's the command. So I'm gonna execute into the container called Olama. I'm gonna execute Olama run verbose gamma tree. So we just press enter on all of those. Now all the machines are pulling gamma tree. And as soon as we finish the polling, uh, we're gonna start prompting. Perfect. Now we are ready to actually do the prompt and look at the speed. So I've prepared this specific prompt. I'm gonna ask for the derivative of, of a function uh, that typically takes time for models to reply. So that's what I'm expecting, that it takes a lot of time. And then we can just look at the stats. Starting with the Raspberry Pi, uh, the prompt is ready. I guess it's already loading. Yes, uh, that's how fast it is. I'm just gonna press enter on all of the other machines. Look at the difference. The Raspberry Pi has no GPU capabilities. It's doing its thing. Uh, the Jetson is reasonably fast. The MacBook is faster than the Jetson and the laptop with the dedicated GPU is already finished. And let's wait a little bit for the other machines to finish and then we can look at the stats together. And we are done. Let's look at the eval rate. That's a good summary of the performance of the execution on the, of the LLM. So starting with the Raspberry Pi is about four. It's, it's all right. Um, hardly fast enough for many applications if you if you just prompting if or even if you're using as as an agent biddable uh applicability then we go for the jetson the jetson is a whole order of magnitude faster uh than the raspberry pi that is uh, somewhat impressive and then we see that the apple the macbook it is two times the one from nvidia jetson considering that the macbook is also an order of magnitude more expensive to get two times the performance that's where i want you to picture how convenient the jetson can be and this is again this is in order of magnitude more expensive than the jetson but of course we uh we, it was the most highly performance of all the machines that we have here it generated four about four times faster than the jetson still I think the Jetson did a really good job. It's gonna be about the same numbers. Uh, so Jetson be four times faster or or, or, or manage it faster than the Raspberry Pi. MacBook will be twice as fast as the Jetson and the laptop will be about four times as fast as the Jetson. I hope you can see already that the Jetson, it, it can be a good choice even to run LLM models. If, if you make it simpler prompts or if you scope your use of LLM for specific things like agents, I think the Jetson can be a really good choice. Our last experiment is to run a SQL application. SQL is a powerful framework that allows you to write generic, readable, high performance, parallel code that is meant to be used for heterogeneous. Some words are just too difficult for me. Heterogeneous computing in, in mind. If you want to know more about this technology, I'll leave a link in the description. Here is how briefly it works. This is a C++ application that is running with, that is compilable by a SQL compiler. The SQL compiler recognizes this include, and this gives us access to powerful generic functions that we can call an, an offload computation, a parallel computations to a specific device. So the program is, is very simple. I detect which device, because SQL works for multiple devices. It works for the GPU, for CPU, it doesn't matter. You select the device, you print this information, you start some timer, you allocate the memory to hold the total number of prime numbers that you counted. That's the purpose of the application, to count how many primes you see within a range. And then you offload you submit a kernel to your GPU or parallel computation device. And this function is called in parallel for as, as many parallel unit execution units you have at the same time. So I'm what I'm doing. Oh, this is an extra semicolon. Tell me if this number is prime, but do this for as many devices or as many cores, independent cores as you have, for example, CUDA cores, and tell me if it's a prime. And if it's a prime, you increase a counter that is a reduction variable that's going to hold and it's going to be atomically incremented among the different threads. Maybe too complicated for now. What matters is that this is a parallel application that runs in the GPU. And then we copy the results from the GPU back to the host or CPU that's running the code. 
and then we just print how how much it took to get all the primes now let's run the program this this program that i wrote that it, i just shared it is inside a dev container that contains all the sql framework pair to do this offloading to the gpu so all we have to do is to call this container again i'm passing the right options to make sure the gpu is accessible from inside the container and from the macbook we don't have gpus in that case not even uh the gpus in the uh, m3 chip because i'm gonna have to run from docker so we're only going to use the cpu part of the m3 chip for this experiment that's the command that we call to run the SQL program. It's called primes. The first argument is up to which number are we counting the primes? And the second argument is to select what parallel device we're going to offload the computation to. So in, in, in this case, the zero for the Raspberry Pi and the MacBook is the CPU. In the case of a Jetson and, um, and the laptop, zero is the GPU. So zero is... It's, it's kind of the preferred device that Circles pick. Okay, uh, let's start. Raspberry Pi, Jetson, MacBook, and the laptop. Laptop is finished already. Raspberry is still busy. So here we see just a general information about the computation device, the parallel computation device. It's the native CPU. For the Jetson, it's found the O-ring. So that's actually the GPU device. For the MacBook, it's also the SQL native GPU. And for the laptop, it detected the NVIDIA RTX 2000. Raspberry Pi is still busy, but we can already start the, um, the conclusion. So the, the laptop took uh, less than half a second to compute that number of primes between 0 and 20 million. The MacBook took roughly 4 seconds. The O-ring took roughly 2 seconds. So two, roughly 2 times faster than the Apple. And the Raspberry Pi poor guy took 40 sec uh, roughly 40 seconds. I like this experiment because the LLM one is... It, the way they may have implemented the models, it, it's really, it, it can work well for CPU. But if you're going for like the utmost parallel computation uh, uh, problem in which you can specify different independent tasks for all your computation parallel devices, um, you can get really good performance. Uh, you, you actually see a huge difference between the Orin and a normal single board computer like the Raspberry Pi. So here's the results, Raspberry Pi, Jets, on MacBook and laptop. For completeness, I'm gonna run the same program, but I'm gonna offload the computation part to the CPU. Now, all I have to do is specify one here. And I'm gonna do the same for the Jets. I press enter here, press enter here, um, and wait. Now the Jets is finished, and here we see the difference that I just spoke about. If we're gonna use the CPU of the Jets, it takes 34 seconds, a little bit less than Raspberry Pi, which is kind of expected because the uh, the Jetson has six cores, whereas Raspberry Pi has four, although the cores are faster than the Raspberry Pi, it's difficult to really pinpoint. But the important part is that whatever, what took 34 seconds can take two seconds if you do it the right way in the right parallel method. And the laptop, which has 28 cores, took about four seconds, which is even slower than the, than the Jetson in the GPU mode. So that's also somewhat impressive. Even though it had 20, 28 cores, um, I must say there is a virtualization layer a little bit between, because this is a, a Windows device, there's a bit of a layer between the computation um, and the representation of a core from inside a Docker container. All to say that if we were running maybe a Linux native operating system in this computer, it could have been a little bit faster. Still, could be arguably slower than the Jetson at its JPU power. That's it for this video. I hope you have learned something new. I hope you have created a new picture of the Jetson. I think it's a really good alternative that is applicable for many different GPU applications out there. LLM is one of them, computer vision, robotics, you name it. There are many things that we can use this, this board to play with. Till next time.